Great. Now, next we've got David Kennedy. So David's on Zoom. Can you hear us, David? Uh, yes, I can. Thank you. Good morning. Great. So we've got your paper there, which um, everyone will note has been updated in terms of so it highlights those key points and everything like that. Do you want to just talk through anything you think is worth adding, and then we'll just go straight to questions? Thank you. Kia ora, um, Council. Uh, just a couple of things that are updates since the report was first prepared, but the, I guess the most important thing to note initially is that, um, as noted in the report in the second section, work is on programme, is on budget, <coughs> and there are no quality issues at present, so um, everything's going according to plan. Uh, just a couple of uh, a couple of updates. It says here that the traffic controls are established and we've got entry from Madras exiting onto Barbados. The contractors have decided to trial doing it the other way around and are currently having the entry onto the site from Barbados and exit onto Madras. So just think that the um, way the traffic is seeming to flow around the CBD, that that is less disruptive both for uh, things that are coming to the site but also for the surrounding street network. So that's, um, that, that's a change that's just occurred. Um, probably the other thing of interest to you that I can expand on briefly is that we had a community meeting on the 8th of November, we had about eight members of the public come to it. We invite all of the surrounding areas. We give them a brief presentation from the building contractor about what's happening currently on site and what's about to happen. Um, they, they, were, they expressed strong interest in, in that and um, would like to have quarterly meetings, which we'll, we'll undertake. We'll also have meetings with them on an as-required basis if anything else pops up. Um, the main concerns they raised were uh, vibration from the um, the piling work um, and uh, the spreading of dust from the site. We've talked with the contractor about those issues and asked the contractor to visit the specific homes that have um, commented on vibration. Fortunately, work has now moved away from those areas <coughs> um, and as, as, as it moves around the site. So if there's anything further we need to do with, in terms of communications with those people, the, the building contractor has been asked to do that. Um, and they have also begun to introduce additional dust suppression measures around the site. Uh, it seems obviously when there's a nice, calm Canterbury day, we don't have dust problems, but when the northwest blows, uh, it does tend to spread dust from all the construction sites uh, in the city around a bit, but um, we'll continue doing what we can to suppress that. Um, <clears throat> they've poured a small amount of concrete just to sort of set some platforms um, already. Um, significant concrete pours um, they were trying to undertake the first one of those before Christmas. It's now probably 50-50 as to whether they'll get one done before Christmas or after Christmas. And once we, uh, the, the, the building contractors are working with council officers to determine the best um, times of day or night and, um, and mediation uh, measures for having a lot of concrete trucks turn up at the same time or over a, over a prolonged period. So they're working with council officers to come up with the best solution there once we know what that is, we will communicate that with um, with the surrounding community as well. Uh, so, um, Chair, th those are my updates. Uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, David. That's very useful and it's a really good report. Does anyone have any questions? Yep. yep. Uh, great. So we'll go Aaron and then Yanni. Yeah, thanks for the update, David. Hey, just a, a very basic question. Have we set up a, um, a camera? for some stop motion of the site coming out the ground and, and you turn it into a video in four years' yeah, time. The, 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 contract, the contract has set a camera up across the road at a decent height, so we'll have a um, sequential time motion sort of video of the whole project. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> thank, thank you. Um, I was just wondering, in regards to design around having active edges, if there's any more work being done on the sorts of facilities that you might like to have. Obviously, we've, we're in the middle of a um, street consultation that shows, you know, vibrancy and lots of activation. But just in regards to the design, I still don't really get a sense of what activations the stadium's going to have when there's not big events on. And just wondering if there's any, what the opportunity is to look at, you know, bars, cafes, restaurants, um, other, other businesses that might go on that ground floor. Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> uh, Venues Otakahi, um, who will be the operator of the facility once it's complete, are working with 
council and themselves with respect to activations and putting in place um, o over time a, a sort of a plan for how that will all work. Uh, so that's probably something that we could um, get some more information for you from VO. Sorry, I, get, I should be more specific. I'm just interested in the, the actual design itself, whether it's allowing for any sort of ground floor activation along that, you know, pro probably Madras Street, but maybe the other areas. Just the Is it just that there'll be any sort of permanent um, the, the, hospitality? There some, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are some permanent um, uh, opportunities for... Um, I suppose you'd say tenancies, um, not completely all the way around the bottom of the building, but, but, but parts of it, yes. Right. And, and when would we be in a position to likely understand what those opportunities are? Um, look, I'll have to um, talk with Venues or Kapahi and come back to you because that's something that they will be working on in terms of what the ideal mix of uses and things are. Okay, thank you. Um, just the, the, the final question from me is in regards to, um, and, and it may not be for... Um, it may not be appropriate for, for you, it may be appropriate for, for our staff, but um, in terms of external fundraising, um, either from our regional partners or from yeah, philanthropic... I think you're probably right. That's something we can take offline. I don't think that's a question for David today. Right. Yeah. All right, any other questions? So Phil's happy to move it. Pauline looks like she's happy to second it. Any discussion? Sorry. Well, um, I appreciate that we've got... The, the Te Kaha project is from the delivery board what's the opportunity for us as councillors to ask staff what's happening around those things like that external funding uh, we, can, we can ask staff to come back and give some feedback on that but we don't have the staff here to actually answer that all that completely right could, could we just get a note maybe to get an update on yep, the we'll approaches to action, our regional partners and to philanthropics yep. cool. no good, Thanks. good as gold okay so that's been moved and seconded any discussion all in favor Against, that's carried. Thanks very much, David. Thank you. Okay, Peter, uh, 